You've been here a while now. Yes. How's your German? Yeah, no, my German is good. Um, I'm still taking lessons, still trying to, you know, perfect it. But, you know, we know it's a, it's a tough language. But, uh, yeah, I'm doing my best. Um, every time I go to my German class, you know, I try to speak um, on the pitch and, you know, with some of the guys as much as possible. How, what, what parts of it do you, do you struggle with? I think just the structure of the, the sentences. I mean, you know, they, it's just different, uh, different structure. But uh, yeah. overall, I mean, you know, it's part of the learning process. So, and I'm, I'm happy to, to learn another language for sure. No, nah, sure. Well, I know the whole thing with it's like, I can the tree see is a very difficult thing but if you directly translate Yeah, exactly. It, right? If you directly translate it to English, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. But uh, yeah, no, it's, I'm happy that I, can, that I can learn. What do your teammates say about your German? <laughs> Yeah, they said uh, that I can, I can, I can speak a little bit. I can understand, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously they know it's not, the, it's not the best. But they're, they're just happy that I can, you know, try once in a while to, sure. to speak. And how much? I mean, Julian Nagelsmann is a, is renowned for the speed at which he speaks German. <laughs> yeah. How, how much do you have to go to him? Could you just explain that last bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the first, the first, uh, the first time he was here, he was, uh, you know, coaching us. Uh, in the auditorium, I mean, he was speaking so quick, and uh, um, I looked around to see if people understand. And some of the Germans were like, "Yeah, we, we, we talk so quick," and I'm like, "Yeah, for me, imagine how I feel. It's, <laughs> it's incredibly fast." But uh, yeah, I mean, overall, he, he slowed down a little bit. You know, he he speaks a little bit slower now, so you know, it's, it's easier. It's getting easier to understand him. How have you found working under him? Not what's what's been what's been different working under him compared to what it's been like working with Hansi Flick before? Yeah, and I know, we all know, you know, um, Nagelsmann is a young coach, you know, he has a lot of, a lot of brilliant ideas that he wants to put, implement in the game. And as you can see, <coughs> we play, you know, different structure, different formations, but, you know, we're just happy to, to have him here. You know, we know he's a smart guy. He's a, you know, he's a hungry guy. He wants to, wants to develop, get better. And also, so do we. So, yeah, I mean, to have a coach that young, you know, um, coaching, uh, coaching this club, it's, it's, it's a nice feeling. What's it been like for you? Because you were used to under Hansi Flick playing in more of a back four mm. all the time, and now I heard from Dino Topmuller in an interview he's given that he's wanting you to take this pass more inside. Can mm. you just explain a little bit more? Yeah, for my role under Nagelsmann, it's uh, more like uh, when we when we have the ball, we play like a back three. When we don't, we we play like a back four. So he basically, you know, try to give our wingers, you know, opportunities to go uh, directly to the goal and our fullbacks to, you know, support them as well. So that, that's, that's how we, we play. But for me, uh, it's kind of the same on the hands. You know, it was, uh, we started as a back four, but, you know, when we have the ball, you know, he has me going up. And uh, basically nothing really changed. It's just the same, same different, you know? <laughs> how do you feel when you don't have the ball? You almost take on this superhero role of, well, if no one else is going to stop the ball before Manu's there, I guess it's got to be me. Yeah, no, for me, it's just instinct, I guess. As a defender, you just, you know, um, especially when a guy, when your opponent is, you know, going towards your goal, your first instinct is, you know, you have to stop him at all costs. And yeah, I mean, I, that's what I try to do, you know. Uh, my speed is one of my biggest assets, so I try to use it as much as possible. What about the other assets in your game? I think we almost overlook those, those points as well sometimes. How has it been adjusting in terms of Obviously, there's a lot of dribbling skill within the team. How, how have you developed that since you've been here? Yeah, I developed it quite well. I mean, you know, being higher up the pitch, you know, I have to take on, you know, um, defenders now. And uh, my crossing has gotten better. My, my vision on the pitch, my awareness is it's gotten a lot better. So I'm happy for that. What's the mentality like that you have to take when you're going one-on-one -on -one with the ball against a player? Yeah, the mentality is, uh, you know, to get past them. I mean, you know, to, to have the confidence to, you know, try something to... At the end of the day, the goal is to get past the defender and put a cross in the box. So um, you have to think about that, how you can, you know, unbalance the defender and, and get past them and, you know, give the ball to your, your midfielders, your strikers to, to score. What interests me is also when it's not going well, when you have maybe the first two or three, the defender gets the better of you. Yeah. How do you then adjust yourself to be like, this time it's going to work? Yeah, at that point, I mean, um, when you go one, two time against the defender, you know, you try to try something else, but you don't, you don't stop, you know, going at him because 
you know, that's the, <laughs> that's the thing you don't want to do. Um, when you have the ball, you know, he stops you one, two times. He has confidence, but also you have to believe in yourself that you can get past him. So, you know, when you go up against a defender, you know, one, two times and he stops you, but, you know, you just have to keep going. You know, uh, you can't change your game, you know, especially in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You just have to, you know, try something else or play a one-two, you know, improvise. Sure. Are you the sort of player who, maybe if you're getting the better of someone and you can feel it's getting to them, will you try and get under their skin a bit with a bit of trash talk or? No, no, I, for me, I don't, I don't really trash talk on the pitch. You know, I just play the game. Um, once in a while, you know, there's a little bit of brawls here and there, you know, I'm in it, but at the end of the day, no, I don't really trash talk players. I don't. Has anyone just, done that to you? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> of course, it happens a lot of times. Um, when a couple of players got past me one, two times, you know, they start talking. But I mean, it is what it is. You know, it's the game. And at the end of the day, all I care about is the, it's the three points. <laughs> sure, sure. Without swearing, can you say anything that someone said to you to try and like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's one time, I mean, I forgot which game it was. You know, one of the uh, attacker got past me. He looked, he looked at me, he's like, bro, you suck. I was like, it was, in, it was against Canada, so I was like, ah, okay, it is what it is. But, you know, we won the game, so that was all that matters. So We got to talk about Canada as well. Sure. Because uh, you're going to the World Cup. Yes, very exciting, very exciting. I'm happy for that. And tell me how you felt before that game where you qualified. Because I, once you're into the game, you know, there's Alfonso, the, the player, but Alfonso, the fan, yeah. what, what are those hours like before? Yeah, for me, I mean, you know, it was unfortunate what happened, um, you know, not, me not being there with the team, but, you know, uh, yeah, watching the game as a fan, you know, you see, you know, the outside noise when you're not really, you know, part of the team, you see the outside noise, you see the support the team has. And for me, it was, it was nerve wracking. I mean, I wasn't on the pitch, but I was, I was nervous, you know, for the team, for, you know, for how the game's going to go. Um, we knew that Jamaica was a strong team. We knew the, the kind of players they have, and you know we were motivated because uh, we just came off uh, came off a loss. Um, I think it was in uh, I forgot who we played before, but we came off a came off a loss, and we told ourselves we need to win this game. You know, this game is a must win. One win, and we're inside. So yeah, I mean, I sent the boys a little text, good luck, and I just sat down, watched the game, and they put on a brilliant performance. When you're nervous. How do you cope? What's happening? Yeah, for me, it's just uh, it's just me watching a game with a straight face, you know, um, no emotions, and you know, I react to, to literally everything that happens in the game—a pass, a shot, you know, a dribble, you know, bite my nails a little bit. But other than that, it's just you know, I just uh, I just tend to move a lot. Yeah, we've seen that on Twitch as well. <laughs> How was it here? Because I'm imagining you're getting quite a lot of back chat. No names, okay, maybe Thomas Muller about, <laughs> oh yeah, when are we ever going to see you at a World Cup? And you must have strode in the next day being like, morning guys. Yeah, no, it was, <laughs> no, you know, they make a little bit of one, two fun, you know, it, 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 they, it's all, you know, under control, it's all respect. So, yeah, you know, they're happy for me, you know, they all say congratulations, you know, they know, you know, the history, you know, uh, 36 years having made it to a World Cup and now for the first time, so. I mean, it was a little bit of one-two jokes, but at the end of the day, you know, they all respect it. You know, they know that uh, this tournament is, you know, it's every footballer's dream. Every footballer, you know, wants to play in the World Cup for their country. And yeah, it was, it was really, uh, it was a really cool moment for me. So, how soon after you qualified were you in the Bayern players WhatsApp group, being like, "Oh, hey guys, how's it going?" No, actually, I wasn't in the group chat. I actually waited for them to come from international duty for me to, you know, say, "Hey guys." I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys in Qatar. <laughs> yeah, one or one or two of them are like, uh, yeah, you know, it'll be cool if we have you guys in our group. I was like, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you gotta watch out. You know, it's just a little bit of a little bit of banter here and there, joke. So, but yeah, it was cool. It was cool. How would you compare the way that Canada play to how you play here with Bayern? There's a, a bit of a difference in terms of how you're here expected to dominate every opponent, I guess. Yeah. How, how would you compare that? I mean, Bayern, you know, you have. You know, the caliber of players that they have, amazing players, you know, uh, World Cup winner, Champions League winner, you know, couple, many times as well. So, yeah, here, you know, it's just me doing my job and same with Canada as well. You know, we have, we have some great players as well. And there, it's just me doing my job, you know, wherever the coach posts me, um, you know, for Canada, I play a little bit higher up the pitch. For here, I play, you know, defense. So, yeah, for me, it doesn't matter wherever, wherever the coach posts me, wherever I, I play, 
trying to do the best I, as I can. How do you find that switch in, in position then? I, are there parts of you sometimes when you see an attacker running through on goal against you for Canada being like, I wish I was there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, obviously defender instinct, you know, kicks in. But at the end of the day, I'm at the other defender's box and they're at my box. No, really much I can do, but, but further back um, on the pitch, maybe, you know, I can help out a little bit more. Talk to me about that goal that you scored against Panama. The sure. one where you're out on the touchline and yes. just as a viewer, I'm thinking, well, there's no danger. Wait, what? What's he done? <laughs> I... Yeah, uh, I mean, the goal started, you know, Panama had the ball for, I think, a minute or a minute and a half. You know, they're switching the ball back and forth, you know, we're getting a little bit, uh, a little bit. you know, we knew that uh, we had to win that game. You know, I think it was 1-1 at the time. And, uh, and I, me and Tejon actually switched position. I went to the right side. He was playing on the left. Johnny was playing on, up top. And uh, the ball got loose in the box. And uh, I knew Johnny knew that I was on the right side. So when he played the ball, he expected me to be there. And fortunately, I was a little bit further back. And as the ball was rolling out, I started running to the ball. And then I saw the defender actually slow down. That's why I picked up pace a little bit more. So when he slowed down, I picked up pace. And then as you can see, if you have the clip. I slowed down a little bit because I thought he was just going to kick it out. But then when he lifted his, his uh, I think it was his right foot, I was like, okay, I, this, this ball's mine. So I kept it in. I actually looked back at the linesman to see if he put his flag up. But he didn't. So I just ran to goal. And I knew Tejon was on the other side. But at that situation, it was 1v1. So, And I was in the box. So I was to my side, I was like, I have to beat this guy and get a shot on goal. So yeah, when, I, when I caught to my left foot, I had one thing in mind, goalkeeper's side, and yeah, the rest, it worked out. Out. <laughs> the rest worked out. I, I, I listen to that and I'm like, it sounds like, you know, Spider-Man talking me through kind of how something's gone down, right? <laughs> because I did not notice that you had time to look back at the lines. I mean, how, how long has that taken? Like, one second. Yeah. Like, I literally, Let's... when I stood up, I went like this and he just kept running, so I was like, all right. <laughs> and also the, the um, the referee, he would have blew the whistle, so I heard it. I listened for the referee whistle and I didn't hear anything, so I kept going. Okay, so you're going to be at the World Cup. How do you, how do you see that now? What can Canada do? I mean, yeah, I mean, the first thing is, you know, we make it, which we're very excited and yeah, we know this is going to be the biggest test in, in, our, in our history of the country. And, you know, against uh, teams like this, uh, countries like this. You know, it's not going to be easy, but we're going to go there with the, with the mindset, you know. We, we're here for a reason. We're excited. We're happy to be here, and we show the world what we can do. In that kind of team, it's placed upon you as, as one of the stars of the team to be a leader. There's been talk here around Bayern about there being a, a lack of leadership as such. I just want to ask you, what does being a leader entail for you? Yeah, of course, being a leader doesn't mean, you know, bossing everyone around, you know, it doesn't mean telling people what to do. You know, just showing the picture present, you know, the hunger that you have to, to win the game, uh, the hunger that you have to, to fight for your team, you know, uh, protect your team on the pitch. And yeah, just, just be vocal. I mean, yeah, as I say that, I don't mean like, Telling players where they're wrong, where they go, you know, just be vocal, giving them good information and motivating the team as, as much as possible. Because I was going to say, well, one of the most vocal, I think, leaders that Bayern has is Thomas Muller. Yes, he's very vocal. Um, Kimmich is also vocal as well. You know, you can see the passion on his face, the, the hunger that he has. I mean, not just those two players, you know, the whole team, we talk to each other. Yeah, I know it looks like the... We don't really say too much, but you know, off the pitch, on the pitch as well, everyone's very vocal, telling, you know, giving good information, you know, playing with, with everything they have. How's the season been for you without David Alaba by your side? Being in the stadium when there weren't any fans, you could hear <laughs> half, half the time he's shouting, Fonse! Yeah, yeah. Like, how, how's it been almost having your, uh, I, I was going to say, uh, your whisperer not, yeah, I mean, not there? I mean, yeah, David, you know, David is a, is a great player, amazing player, you know, as, as you said, he's always vocal, always telling me, you know, at that time when 
when I was playing that position, you know, I was, I was learning, you know, the, the position, you know, I tend to, you know, just ball watch a little bit, you know, watch the ball. And he always kept me on my toes. And uh, yeah, I feel like uh, definitely there's players here that definitely do the same thing. Obviously now they're, they're fans. You can't really hear it, but yeah, this players, uh, Luki sometimes tells me, you know, I tell Lucas, you know, but I have the, the voice in the back of my head, uh, David's voice, Fonzie, Fonzie, you know, so I always check my shoulder every so often to see where the opponent is or where I have to be on the pitch. And when it comes to being a leader off the pitch, that's the bit that we don't see, I guess. Can you just explain what, what, what's required there from your experience? I mean, leader off the pitch is just, um, it's just a guy that, you know, you know uh, treats everyone with respect. I mean, you know, um, from the, you know, the players that have been here for how many years to the new, the, 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 the young kids that come through with us, you know, just treat everyone with respect, treat everyone the same. Um, yeah, it's just basically, that's it. It's Bayern Munich. It means that everyone's got an opinion. Yeah. As I'm sure you're well aware by now, <laughs> even before joining the club. What's your diagnosis? as to what went wrong against Villarreal? I mean, for me, it's, I mean, it's, it's football, you know. You know, you go into a game, you know, thinking that you're going to win it, but, you know, things, things happen. I mean, take nothing from Villarreal. They're a great team, you know, as you can see in the first leg. They, they can play football. They play football, you know, they, they rose to the occasion. And, uh, yeah, we knew that it wasn't our best game um, away from home and uh, coming back here. You know, we, we prepared for, for them and uh, our mindset was right. I guess, um, I don't know, things things happen. Uh, you know, that little, uh, we had the ball, I think, 70, 60% of the time. Um, we had a lot of crosses, a lot of chances to, to score. But I mean, you know, we just couldn't, couldn't do it. You know, they had uh, one break and there you go. Punish us at this high level, you know, just one opportunity sets you apart from and you know they, they came out here they played well and yeah we're devastated with the lot uh, devastated about the loss but uh we keep our head high you know we still have something to fight to play to play for uh, this year and I'll definitely go go again next year but uh you know with more hunger and more fight you took criticism after that which on the one hand didn't consider that in the first game there were I'd say two or three occasions where if you're not there Villarreal are scoring a second goal that said, how was that criticism for you after the Villarreal second leg? Yeah, for me, I mean, I was happy. You know, it's normal. Um, you know, especially being a defender, you have to know that you make a mistake, one mistake. You know, everyone's everyone criticizes you, criticizes the team. You know, especially playing for a team like Bayern. You know, they're always under the microscope. But for me, I I tried my best. You know, I. I was playing, I think I was playing three. I was playing on the left side, in the three in the back. Um, you know, the coach said in the interview, they put uh, one of the fast guys on. And he wanted me to, to contain him. And yeah, I mean, I tried my best to stay, to keep, keep on side with the rest of the team. But, you know, you can only do so much when you have to look at your defender, your, your, your opponent, your, the back line. So I guess, you know, I was a little bit too far ahead. And when he played the ball around, tried my best to get there. You know, as you can see, he didn't really contact the ball properly. But, I mean, this is football. How is it for you a night after that kind of result? Like, are you somebody who's sitting there struggling to get to sleep till X hours of the morning? Like, how, how was it that night, for example? Yeah, I mean, you know, we had an opportunity, you know, to, to win another Champions League. And, yeah, that game, you know, the whole team, everyone was disappointed, everyone was... Yeah, for me, I took a while to go to sleep. You know, I called my girlfriend, we talked about it, but yeah, I took a while to go to sleep that, that night, you know, thinking about what went wrong, you know, and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you, know, you move on, you, you go on to the next game, and that's what we try to do against Bielefeld. You know, we came back, we, we bounced back. And now this Saturday, we have an opportunity to, to clinch the title, and that's what we're looking forward to. How do you analyze this Borussia Dortmund team then? Take nothing away from these guys. These guys are a good team, you know, especially, you know, the way they play, they, they attack quick, you know, they have some really great players. Um, their strikers, you know, obviously, 
good, good player, great player. And uh, yeah, I mean, we know it's one of the biggest given in the German football uh, uh, season. So we're excited. We're excited for the occasion. I know they're going to come with the fight and it's just going to be a good game. How's it going up against Erling Haaland for you? He's yeah, about man. one of the only players who's as quick as you as well in that team. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's a big guy, you know, when the ball gets played, it's very hard to, to muscle him, you know, he's strong. Uh, he's also quick as well. So, I mean, we, we're smart when we defend him, you know, we know that he likes to run in behind and for us, we just have to stop the, stop the, the ball going behind. We know that we can't stop every ball, it's going to happen, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're going to do, we're going to do the job. Is winning the Bundesliga alone enough for Bayern Munich? No, obviously, you know, winning the Bundesliga is a, is a tremendous, you know, accomplishment. Um, you know, uh, we've won it uh, many times and obviously we want to keep winning it and also more and more. So, yeah, for us, um, you know, we're hungry, we want more. And uh, if we could have added, you know, another two trophies to the cabinet or even another five, would have been amazing. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, for us, uh, you know, so it was a long season, and uh, yeah, we're 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 hungry to win this title, and we're we're ready for the fight. There are fans out there who, whilst they're happy with the Bundesliga win, I think it's the Bayern way. They want more. What yeah. what do you say to those fans to assure them that the future's looking bright? There's obviously a little uncertainty right now with the contract situations of various players. What makes you believe? I mean, you're signed on until 2025. Mm -hmm. What makes you believe better things are to come? Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, that department is not my, my, my forte. I don't really pay attention to that. But on the pitch, I mean, you know, being with the guys, you know, obviously the fans, you know, only see like the games, you know, the open training. But each and every day with this team, you know, we all motivate each other. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's good young players coming up, you know, like Paul Bill and uh, all, these, all these young players. Yeah, I mean, the future is bright, like Jamal Musial as well. The yeah, future is bright, you know. Um, we breed, you know, these kids are hungry, you know, even the veterans are hungry and yeah, we're ready. We're ready for the fight and definitely there's a bright future there for, for us uh, coming forward. He's not better than you at basketball though, is he? No, Jamal's not better than me at basketball, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to check, you came here from, from a little basketball session as, as you were saying. Um, your injury is something we also need to talk about. What was it like when you were, when you got the news? that you were going to have to take as long out as you had to? Yeah, for me, it was, uh, you know, when I came back from holidays, you know, I trained uh, two times and standard procedure, you know, we do the test and everything. And uh, I had uh, actually caught COVID and, you know, every every player did, did the test, the MRI for their body. And they saw something and uh, I was sitting at home, actually, uh, about to play FIFA. And uh, I got the call from the, the doctor. He's like, yeah, there's something going on with your, with your heart. You need to call me for further examination. I was like, what's going on? He explained everything, came in, and said, oh yeah, Mark, a daddy's, you have to stop playing for, for a while. They didn't know how long I would be out. They just said, you have to stop playing uh, football, no physical activities. You know, you have to keep your heart rate low. Okay, I was like, all right. So one, two, three, four weeks went by. Just kept getting checked up. At the time, for me, it was frustrating because I thought it was like something that I just, you know, I didn't know how dangerous it was to the extent. I just thought it was like something that, okay, you just have to sit out for like three weeks and then it's gonna go away. But as time went on, I started getting frustrated, obviously. But uh, I don't know, it's just, I was really frustrated because like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even work out. I was just a couch potato, just sitting at home, playing games every single day, doing, trying to find ways to entertain myself, going outside for a walk, you know, because I'm a very active guy. I like to, you know, be active and... You're not doing Sudoku. <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to do anything. So I was like, okay, so yeah, I mean, it was a scary, scary news. You know, my family came, they visited me, you know, I was nice. But yeah, for me, when I first heard it, it was, it was very scary. and. And when the doctors told me that, they didn't know how long I would be out, you know, that was even more scary. And yeah, I'm happy that, you know, everything worked out at the end and I can be back on the pitch. What's it been like for you 
but uh, just in your head, you talk about having to entertain yourself there. Particularly after the breakthrough that you had here in that season, you named in the World, World Team of the Year. Season after that, a little more difficult by your own admission as well. And then you get that injury. What's going through your head at that point? Because must, there must be a part of you which is like, why can't, why can't I control this? Or it's, it must be so frustrating. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I mean, yeah, it happened. You know, um, the season that, you know, FIFA World 11 was nice, it was good, you know. Um, I think it was all, it was all because uh, we won like six trophies and it was a good year for, for Bayern. It was a good year for me, it was a good year for the, the, whole, the whole organization, you know, on a personal standpoint. And then the next season, you know, ankles, you know, and then the injuries started coming. But, you know, but I kept fighting, you know, I knew, I knew these, these things happen, you know, uh, injuries is part of the game, you know, poor performance part of the game. But, at the end of the day, you can't give up. You know, you just have to keep fighting. Um, I know I have the, I have the quality to, to, to do it again, and, and I'm trying my best. And with this injury, you know, it's another step back, but you know, I, I kept believing, and yeah, and uh, I never give up, and I kept kept going. What's it been like for you to, in such a short space of time, to become like a face of Bayern Munich? Because I notice it when I'm I'm going around the city, I'm seeing. Robert Lewandowski smiling back at me, and I'm also seeing you up on these billboards. How, how has that been to have that meteoric rise and, and cope with it, I guess, just on a human level? I mean, it was, it's nice, you know, but uh, I don't really see it as, as that. You know, I, I go to the city, you know, I walk around, people ask me a picture, I say, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just me, you know, enjoying the sports that I, that I love, and playing the game that I love, you know, and all the other things that come. You know, it's amazing to, you know, people to know my name, people to, you know, how my face is everywhere, but uh, I'm only human, you know, I just, just enjoy my football and try my best on the pitch, that's all, that's all I give. Just finally, remembered, just finally, uh, you are a UNHCR ambassador. It's very difficult to, to go through a day right now as a human being without noticing what's going on with refugees in various conflicts around the world. I know that this is a, an issue that you've spoken about before in, in that role. Just how is that for you, noticing what's, what's going on right now, particularly in, in Ukraine, for example? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to see. You know, it's very, it's very tough to see. Um, I don't know firsthand what they're going through, but, you know, my parents know, you know, my parents definitely see what's going on. But, uh, I mean, you know, having this happen in the 20, 21st century is, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and, you know, in Ukraine, you know, I, I give my prayers to everyone there, their whole family. And hopefully, you know, this stops soon because, you know, it's very hard to, to watch, it's very hard to see, very hard to read about. And yeah, you know, I've been there where people fled, uh, people are fleeing their homes, you know. They've been there for so long and now they have to leave, you know. Um, I've, ref I've experienced that and, you know, it's not easy, you know, especially being, you know, kids that, kids that are there just, you know, trying to be, trying to be kids and now they have to experience it, you know, it's traumatizing, so, yeah, it's, it's a tough situation. This is a game between two arch rivals. Lewandowski! Erling Haaland! Dortmund absolutely superb! Bayern is on fire! Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.